Hey, for all the authors that are listening out there, I wanted to share with you this great email that, that we received here at the Reading With Your Kids podcast from Dr. Linda Mubarak. She is the uh, a past guest and the author of Maxine's New Job. Here's the email. Dear Fatima and Jen, good news. Maxine's New Job has been nominated to receive the prestigious Henri Award at the 2018 Christian Literacy Awards for Outstanding Literacy Work in the Children's Book Division. I sincerely believe your certifying Maxine as a great read helped bring increased social media attention to the book. Thank you for the exposure and the great marketing. We are so happy for Dr. Linda Mubarak that her book, uh, Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read, Maxine's New Job, received this prestigious recognition. We would love to help your book receive that same kind of recognition. If you are interested in having your book considered for our Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read program, please visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. You can click on the contact button, send us a, a note, and we'll send all the information back to you, or you can go right to our Certified Great Great Read page on our website. It's fun, it's easy, and it is really, really an effective way to let the world know that your book stands out above all the rest. The Reading with the Kids Certified Great Read Program. Reading with your kids. Hola, Nihon, Konnichiwa, Assalamu Alaikum, Shalom, Shambo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading With Your Kids podcast, coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, or wherever you find your podcasts. Our guest today is mother and daughter team Katie Jaffe and Jennifer Lawson. They're here to tell us about their beautiful children's book, Fly, Fly Again. If you are anywhere in the Midwest on November 23rd and 24th, be sure to fly yourself over to Navy Pier and experience the 17th Annual Chicago Toy and Game Fair. It is going to be a blast and we are going to be there. That's right. We are creating a totally interactive reading with your kids podcast booth to give you and your kids the experience of being a guest on the podcast. It's going to be a whole lot of fun, and we would love to have you there. You know, everybody who goes to the Chicago Toy and Game Fair, they get to play with life-size toys and games from all around the world. They get to meet inventors, authors, characters, enjoy interactive stage shows, and so much more in this immersive hands-on event. And check this out. Listeners of the Reading With Your Kids podcast can save $3 per ticket by going to shytag.com, C-H-I-T-A-G.com, shytag.com, and using the promo code R-W-Y-K. That's our initials, Reading With Your Kids, R-W-Y-K, $3 off of each ticket, and there's absolutely no limit to how many tickets you can purchase. Be sure to join us at the Chicago Toy and Game Fair, November 23rd and 24th, and Navy Pier. Joining us online, we're trying this one more time. Joining us on the line from Austin in Texas. We're really, really happy to welcome the authors of Fly Fly Again, mother and daughter team, Jennifer Lawson and Katie Jaffe. Jennifer, Katie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us on your show. Third time is the charm. I usually usually can get the introductions in in no more than two takes. This is the first time it's taken me more than two takes to get an introduction. And, and I'm, I'm really appreciative of your patience, and I'm really excited to – to learn all about Fly Fly again, why don't we why don't we talk with Jennifer? Jennifer, please tell us what this story is all about. All right. Well, um, it is um, about uh, a little pilot. Well, she wants to be a pilot, and she um, is building things and testing things, and she tries it over and over and different ways to do it. She learns all about lift and gravity and thrust and drag um, through her pet Hawk, um, who is named Hawk. And uh, then she has a little neighbor who is a skateboarding enthusiast, and he knows all about control and how to 
turn on different axes like roll, pitch, and yaw. And um, th together they build a little airplane. And, you know, through trial and error and working things out, they are able to figure out how to fly. And this is really neat. I was, I was telling Jennifer and Katie that my, my family and I just came back from Costa Rica and we experienced all sorts of weather and excitement on that, on that flight home. It, it, we really don't think, uh, Katie, we really don't think about the mechanics and the science of flight very often. You know, we just jump in this big long cylinder and, uh, you know, we, <laughs> we get whisked off to another place, but it really is, Fascinating. How do you, uh, this might be a difficult question to, to answer, but how do you think that we've, we've gotten in, in such a relatively short period of time to the point where we, uh, human de beings don't think about the, the, the fact that we're doing this amazing thing. We're able to fly. I know it's so, so interesting how over time everyone's just gotten used to it and it's kind of become a normal thing now, but it really is fascinating and, it's something that we're really excited to teach younger kids about because, you know, now with everything at your fingertips, especially um, things like that go kind of unnoticed. And, and we're trying to kind of bring back that passion for flight and teach really from the beginning and, and create this really strong foundation um, in younger kids and and get them to really appreciate um, all these different levels of um, engineering and, and building and um what a fun process it can be to learn to learn about these things from the start. Yeah, it, it really is, and I think that this is a great because most most families fly at some point. You know, it. it I, I I don't think I flew until I was like 21 years old, but um, I, but I'm almost 100. I don't think they were flying when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, but but nowadays, you know, flight is very very common for for most families, and and we don't think about it, but we we really should. And and thinking about flight is I'm imagining, uh, Katie, is a, is a great kind of foundation uh, for kids to get into other. STEM fields and, and start thinking about other uh, other STEM activities. That's right. I completely agree. And, and you know, like you said, kids, um, you know, are traveling a lot with their parents and flying is so much more common these days. So it's, it's fun that they can um, really enjoy the journey of it, not just the destination and really um, enjoy learning about this in school and um, spend that much more time kind of paying attention to the details that go into this and um, all the people and um, all the process that, that create such a fun experience for, for everybody. Now, now, Jennifer, one of the things that, that I'm amazed at, and it's just because I've, I've kind of forced myself to, to, to look at these systems in this way. I'm amazed at the number of people that it takes to to make flight successful these days, you, you, right, you right. have the people who put it together, and the and the air traffic controllers, and the meteorologists, and the pilots, and the air flight attendants, and the booking agents, and the baggage handlers. Talk a little <laughs> bit about that, and and how we as parents and as teachers can kind of use, you know, a, an examination of flight to to remind our kids the importance of working together. Well, that's one of the core um, ideas that goes through the book is that you need to lift each other up and help each other um, understand things so that you can reach for higher things. And um, we're hoping that through this book that um, that and, and teaching young children difficult concepts that they can, um, you know, learn to, to work with each other and to keep trying to never give up and you know, nothing's impossible if they just keep going and, um, you know, have that never give up attitude. Yeah, Jennifer, you know, you're a mom. You've raised Katie, and Katie is a really accomplished. Um, uh, and I think you're an engineer and a design consultant, and that's amazing. Jennifer, how important do you think it is for us as as parents to allow our kids to experience some failures, to encourage them to try and, and to help them through some failures to help them really grow and succeed? 
Well, I, that is really important. I really believe that um, through failure, that's how they, you know, figure things out and learn how to keep going. Um, yeah, I taught in the classroom for a long time, and um, it, it's just so important that, that they're able to figure it out themselves. And a lot of times today, I see the parents coming in and rescuing them or figuring it out for them. And I think that it it helps their brain to develop better when they can go through the process and and they can um, just just learn how to get over that hump and and keep going and not get discouraged and you know it's just that that's very important in their education now now Katie would you confer would you agree with with your mom that that you know her letting you kind of fall down and stumble and fail and get up and try again it didn't break you it didn't didn't ruin you right right i think it really <laughs> taught me how to problem solve and to figure things out for myself and and to be much stronger whether it was in school or as a mom now of 3 i think you know in any project, I'm, you know, really trying to find solutions for things at all times and really prepared to have a plan B and to not um, get discouraged and to be excited about thinking of new um, new ways to solve problems. Now, now, Katie, you you I, I mentioned that you are a, a design consultant. So you're actually designing aircraft right now. So primarily interiors of aircraft. OK. Um, and our family is um, in the aviation industry, so I see all levels of um, what it takes and what goes in, whether it's a pilot or any sort of engineer or um, any designer really um, working on any aircraft because there are so many different um, elements that go into building just the simplest of airplanes. Um, and, you know, it's been really exciting actually this year looking at um, – how we're now celebrating the 50th anniversary of um, the um, lunar landing of Apollo 11 and, um, you know, really how far um, we've come in flight and starting from, you know, the Wright brothers all the way through now and, um, you know, 50 years later after landing on the moon and really looking at new innovative ideas, looking into human space flight now. And um, this kind of, from a teacher's point of view of my mother having been a teacher for um, so many years, looking at ways we can get kids excited about this and really interested in um, looking at ways we can move forward in the future with flight. I, Jennifer, one of the things that's, that excited me is that, you, you know, uh, Katie's bringing up the, the, the 15th anniversary of, of the lunar landing. You had a pretty influential person give the uh, write the forward for this for Fly Fly again. Yes, um, Buzz Aldrin's been a huge inspiration to me my entire life and to Katie as well. And he, um, you know, he always tries to take people beyond where he's gone and encourages everyone. And you know, I just he is. Just fascinating. His books, Reach for the Stars, No Dream is Too High. You know, he, he just has the most incredible message. And he, um, you know, just his whole background and how hard he uh, worked at developing, you know, the orbital rendezvous and different things for NASA that, you know, without him, they, I, you know, it would have been so much harder. It, it just reinforces, again, how everybody has to work together. You know, if you think of NASA as a corporation and how many different kinds of people fit together over there to get where they have gone, you know, it's just amazing. So one of the things that I'm, I'm it, it just blows me away. And I and I mention this to kids a lot when I'm in a uh, doing doing my school assembly programs. Just the idea that that the, the third and fourth graders or fifth graders who are seeing my show, they're carrying around this little rectangular thing in their pocket that has more computing power than <laughs> the computers that, that figured out how to get a man on the moon. That just blows me away. What do you both think about that? Well, I, we own a technology company, and I am so excited about the future for the students these days. 
that they have augmented reality now. Um, you can, I think Apple's starting Wonderscope and just all the things they can do now. You can actually feel like you're there, you know, in Africa or, you know, wherever you want to go. You can hang glide. Or it, it's just amazing what they can do. And if we can give them a really strong foundation, they're going to be able to solve all kinds of problems, you know, in, in ways that we could never, that we haven't even imagined yet. So I'm just really excited about their future. Yeah. I'm really excited too. Katie, as, as a mom of, of young kids, uh, how, how do you feel? Do you share your mom's excitement about technology and how it's being used to educate kids these days? I really do. I agree with her completely in that it is, it's so much fun to see the potential, um, and all the new, um, innovative technology, even in the classroom today and things that I never imagined would be available to kids and kind of like my mom was saying, you can go anywhere in the world. You can learn all about space, all these things that, um, you could do previously, but now it's at a whole new level and it's just so accessible now to everyone. And, um, it's it's really truly incredible and, and really exciting for the future of children's education. Now I'll just throw this out: it, it, either one of you, whoever um, has uh, wants to answer this, uh, I, I'm th- I'm thinking, uh, imagining a family reading this book, maybe before they're going on a trip, or or even just um, you know just because they found it and they they were fascinated by it. What kind of things can families do to kind of of uh, Use Fly Fly again as a platform to to know even more about aviation and flight. Well, I think that they um, there's so many um, springboard opportunities off this book, and when we wrote it, we were you know we had teachers and parents and grandparents in mind that they could go off in any direction from this, whether it be you know, the science of flight or the, you know, engineering and building things with what you find around the house or, you know, recycled items or um, I just feel like they can um, springboard that math. There's all kinds of math lessons with the rotations of the skateboards or the axes that um, the hawk is flying in or the plane needs to fly in and how do you control it and um, and they can go places, uh, you know, they can talk about going different places. Uh, there's just so many different things. And, at, you know, at the end, you know, they end with the dream of going to Mars. So, um, you know, and then there's the whole rocket science thing they could go off of in space. And I, I just think that there's endless opportunities to teach your child or your student, or anyone, you know, it, it's hopefully will inspire them. Well, I just love the fact that you're bringing, uh, helping kids be conscious of, of what's going on. Uh, you know, it's it's really fun to do something and become really good at it so that you're, you're not thinking about it, you know, whether you're a dancer or doing magic or juggling, and you get to that point where everything's kind of automatic, but it's always really best to, to be aware of things. And while kids are out there playing and, and having fun, it would be really neat for them to also understand that, hey, I'm on the skateboard and I'm doing this kind of engineering thing and this is why this is happening and this is why when I turn this way, this the skateboard reacts in this way or my bicycle reacts in this way. And I think it's really a, a, a great service to help kids be present in those moments and to be conscious of 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 what's happening in their lives. Well, yeah, and, and the, the Wright brothers started on their bicycles, and that's mm-hmm. how they taught themselves about how lift would work and flight. And so, I mean, it is. It's all and, – and they learn so much better when they're having fun and playing games, and it just soaks in and becomes a part of them. Katie, it, it must be exciting for you that, you know, at this time, it's, it, it seems that there's so many people getting into flight and becoming pilots. It's almost as if it's becoming kind of common. So, like you said, just so um, common with not only, you know, you have commercial pilots and private pilots, but so many people that are studying and now researching more and more, even for um, human space flight. And so you have a whole new level of pilots that are joining 
this group of people and this industry that are learning, you know, um, really moving forward. We just toured the Virgin Galactic facility and, you know, just meeting some of those pilots and being so inspired by how, you know, they are now taking people to the next level. And um, it's it's such a, an interesting topic to um, to really explore and just see how it started as such a, you know, such a special, um, almost, it was almost like a, a special occasion to be able to fly. And, and now, now that it is common, we don't want it to be any less special, but, but we really want people to be aware that, um, that this is an amazing industry and there's so much that has gone into it. And, um, you know, we just, um, we want to appreciate where it's going and, and all the new and different, different, exciting, innovative changes that are to come in the future. Yeah. Well- any idea of, of what is there? I know, you know, they're, they're talk about bringing people up into space and, and that's really exciting. Anything else that, that you've discovered that, uh, would, would really kind of open our eyes as the next step in flight? Well, I think that inner orbit and, you know, and Elon Musk, all his, uh, reusable rockets, for him to be able to use the same rockets over and over and land them precisely, um, that's going to change everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, people, it won't be so expensive. And um, just like it was, you know, really hard for people to get into flying, but now we fly all the time. I, I feel like that's going to happen with space, you know, in the, it's going to be incredible. Yeah, really is incredible. I, I, I just imagining what what life is going to be like, Katie, when when your kids are <laughs> adults and and having kids. I know. I, I think about that all the time. How much more accessible things will become that um, right now are aren't even a thought, and um, how much more efficient those processes will be, and how you know little by little, you know, people will more and more people will be able to experience those things in the future. So that's really exciting to think about. Definitely. Katie, how excited were your kids to, to see that you and your mom had worked together to create fly fly again? They were incredibly excited and they love, you know, all these things that, you know, my husband's a pilot and, and we're, you know, such aviation enthusiasts in our home. Um, these things that we mention to them or teach them just to come together in a picture book format and something that they can can really look at and see some of these lessons we've taught them at home and sharing it with their friends and other kids and in our school and our community has been really, really fun to watch. That's wonderful. Now, Jennifer, is this um, a one and done project or are you and Katie thinking about other books? Oh, we have several plans for that. <laughs> They're just going to go on and on and keep adding more characters and uh, more lessons. Um, you know, so so we're just going to keep going with it. We we're hoping to um, get to Mars with the next couple of books. So first, we wanted to do the flight, and then we'll do the rocket science, and then terraforming Mars, and you know, just keep going and going with it. That's incredible. Well, Katie, before we go, where can we uh, go online to connect with you and your mom and learn more about Fly Fly again? So anyone interested in the book can, um, first of all, um, see us at our website at liftofflearningstudios.com. And our book is available for pre-order on Amazon already and on Barnes & Noble online. Awesome. We have had such a fun time speaking to the authors of Fly Fly Again, Katie Jaffe and Jennifer Lawson. Katie, Jennifer, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Jay De La Vega. She'll be here to tell us about her debut middle grade novel, Peter and the City of Monsters. If you and your community are looking for an exciting and totally interactive event to bring a smile to the families in your community, be sure to check out the Reading With Your Kids live event. You can learn all about our totally interactive educational magic shows and our brand new Reading With Your Kids interactive experience. Check it all out at our website, readingwithyourkids.com. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so very, very wonderful. Thank you to the authors of Fly Fly Again, Katie Jaffe and Jennifer Lawson. 
I want to thank my amazing producer, Fatima Khan, for all that she does for the show. Be sure to check out her blog at readingwithyourkids.com. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support and love that she brings into my life. And I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.